Hi there. Today we're talking about metabolism. If you've been noticing the weight gain as a woman over 40 and you're like, geez, I don't know what's happening. I'm eating the same, exercising the same, but I'm gaining weight around my middle as well. So what's up? Your metabolism may be up or rather down. Sadly, as we get older, our metabolism starts to decrease. And when our metabolism decreases, we're not burning as many calories, which means we can start gaining weight by doing the exact same things. So today I want to talk about ways you can boost your metabolism. You don't have to just take this laying down and just say it is what it is. We're actually going to talk about ways you can naturally boost your metabolism, easy things, don't require a prescription, things you can do for free in your home. So let's get into it. All right, here's the news. When you turn 40, your metabolism decreases by 5% each decade. Yeah, so 60, you're gonna be down by 10%. So the older you get, the slower your metabolism becomes. But again, that doesn't mean our metabolism is just gonna be slow and it is what it is. I have ways that we can help our metabolism. So the other thing that's going on when we turn 40, again, the hormones are dropping. Our hormones drop. We begin to experience muscle loss. And so we're not burning as many calories. And so we start to gain weight and we start to lose our energy. So let's talk about why metabolism matters. What is metabolism? Why is it so important? So metabolism can also be called the metabolic rate. It is the rate your body turns food into energy. If you've ever had a meal with a really skinny friend and they're eating the exact same thing that you are all the time, except they're half your size, you're like, what? gives. They may have a faster metabolism. They may turn food into energy faster than you do. So let's talk about what we can do to increase our metabolism in case we might be a slow burner. Okay, number one, move. I don't mean move out of state, although if you really want to have at it, move your body. And you have to move your body in a specific way. I'm gonna talk about two specific ways to move your body. Number one is HIIT training. I've talked about HIIT training before, but HIIT training burns more fat and it also decreases insulin resistance, another problem we have over 40. So HIIT is small, short, intense bursts of exercise. And you take a break and then you go back and you exercise as fast as you can. Sometimes it's a 40 seconds on, 40 seconds going as fast as you can, 20 seconds off. Um, but the point is, it's these intervals. It's highs, lows, highs, lows, highs, lows. And this is so great for uh, fat reduction. It's good for your hormones. It's good for your energy level. It's really important. And the beauty of HIIT is that you can do a full HIIT workout in like 15 or 20 minutes and you're done. So HIT is really good. It's really good to increase your metabolic rate. And one note of caution on HIT training, if you are new to HIT, if you haven't been exercising, you need to go slowly. You need to make sure your doctor is okay with it. But if you find yourself totally depleted after a HIT workout, your adrenals may not be ready for it, in which case start slower yoga, Pilates, do, do uh, less intense exercise so you don't burn your adrenals out. Okay, so movement for metabolism, the HIIT training, and then there's also strength training. That is lifting weights, resistant training. We are always burning calories. Right now, watching me, you are burning calories. Hooray, right? It's great news, except you're not burning enough calories to burn off all the food that you're eating throughout the day if uh, you're just sitting here watching me. Sorry, I don't know what you're eating, but I'm, it's a pretty uh, generous statement to say, yeah, no, you're not. You're not burning off enough. But here's the good news. Lifting weights, building some muscle, 
that gives you this freebie weight loss, freebie calorie burning. So lifting weights, heavy weights, uh, as long as you can, up to 10 reps. If you can do 20 with a weight, try an increased weight. So strength train, because that builds the muscle, that makes you burn more calories, and that in turn increases your metabolism. I always tell my one-on-one -on -one health coaching clients, like lifting weights and building muscle is almost like a freebie, a weight loss freebie. Because if you have more weight, just sitting here watching me, you're burning more calories. And that is just great. If you're pained over, oh, I don't wanna eat the rabbit food anymore, lift the weights. I'm not saying you shouldn't eat good food, but lifting weights is just a freebie for extra calorie burning. Here's the other thing about building muscles. Muscles burn more calories, they increase your metabolism, and they also require more energy than fat cells. So you lift more weight, you burn more calories, and that's all wonderful, that's everything that you want. All right, so you are boosting your metabolism by moving in two ways, the HIT, the high intensity training, the up intervals, and then strength training, lifting heavy weights. And also just make sure you, you're move, you move during the day. I know I was guilty of this. I did that one big workout in the morning and then I'd sit on my butt the rest of the day. Make sure you're also moving throughout the day. It's not just a one and done thing. Okay, that will just help keep everything feeling better. Next up, we're talking protein. Eat protein, eat enough protein. Protein supports your muscles and the growth. I can't tell you how many of my clients do not eat enough protein. They say they're eating a great diet and I look at their diet journal and I'm like, that's not enough protein. Protein, again, another great freebie. Protein helps build muscle, just like weightlifting does. It feeds muscle protein. It helps boost your metabolism. So, Eat enough protein, and the other beautiful thing about protein is it helps fill you up. So if you're finding at the end of a meal, you're like, oh, I'm still pretty hungry, did you eat enough protein? I mean, my big three are protein, fat, and fiber, making sure you get a balance of that. But I find for women over 40 especially, each protein, very important. Okay, you're moving, you're eating protein and you're keeping your liver clean and you're eating well overall. So let's break that down. Liver filters out all your toxins, right? So if that pathway isn't clear, things are gonna get backed up. You don't wanna back up. Keep your digestive pathways clear. So what can clog your digestive pathways and your liver? Toxins. So toxins lurk in so many places, unfortunately, in food. I've talked about the dirty dozen list. Those are the fruits and vegetables with the most amount of pesticides. So I always buy that grouping, those 12 organic, and they also have a clean 15 that are the cleanest that I don't buy organic. So watch your food intake with toxins. There's also the beauty products that can have a lot of toxins, the sprays, the cleaners, that sort of thing. So watch all of that for hidden chemicals. Anything you're allergic to or have food sensitivities to, watch that because that's going to get clogged in the liver. Eat enough fiber. Fiber is so important to keep the digestive pathways going, to keep everything moving. And I'm sure you know what else clogs it. It's sugar and processed food. Your body just can't break that down as well. So move. Keep your liver clear. Eat well. Avoid those processed foods and sugars. And also drink water, hydrate. That's gonna help keep your digestive pathways open. It's gonna help the toxins go through. And it's gonna keep you hydrated. I mean, that helps flush out toxins. It helps you process calories. You know, studies show that water actually increases metabolism. And when you eat it, or sorry, when you drink water a half hour before a meal, they say that you are less likely to eat as much. 
my only other disclaimer would be to not drink a ton of water with your meal because that's going to dilute your digestive juices to break the food down. So drink water before, half hour before or half hour after, but you wanna stay hydrated. You wanna keep the fluids going through. All right, another way to boost metabolism is get quality sleep. Sleep is so critical, especially for women over 40. It helps boost your metabolism. It helps you avoid weight gain. We have these two little hunger hormones, ghrelin and leptin, and if we don't get the right amount of sleep, these two hunger hormones go out of control and they control how full we feel at the end of the meal, how satiated. It turns off our hunger hormone. You ever had a bad night's sleep and you wake up and you're just famished? Yeah, those two hunger hormones are at play. Also just helps to process everything in your brain, removes plaque from your brain, so sleep is critical. Okay, I've gone over a lot in a little amount of time, but these are all really important, uh, important habits to take on when you want to boost your metabolism. It's moving your body, high intensity interval training, as well as weightlifting. It's making sure you are eating well, eating enough protein to build the muscle. It's making sure you're avoiding the processed foods and the sugars, that you're keeping your liver and detox pathways open, that you're hydrating to move everything along, and that you're sleeping well. All of these are gonna go a long way in boosting your metabolism, but if you need more help and wanna go one-on-one -on -one with me, I am taking a few more coaching clients for the summer. So reach out to me or comment below and we'll talk soon. Bye.